gentlemen, those in front of me, and those listening in radio land and in TV land, how are you tonight? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. That's the progressive. Ladies and gentlemen, before I speak, I got something important to say. They told me to be accurate, to be brief, and to then to be seated. So I promise I will be as brief as possible, no matter how long it takes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all my friends, jokes aside, I'm here tonight to tell you why I'm here and why I think you're here. I'm here to tell you what is possible and what is next with a progressive-led administration. I hold fast that truth with hope is the only way that we can successfully move this nation forward. I want to use this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to outline the progressive's vision for education. And with your help, come May the 22nd, that will be possible. Over the next decade, I want to see a Cayman education complete its journey to the destination of high standards for all. For the last few years, since our 2005-2009 administration, we have, thank goodness, been moving away from an educational system that really, in essence, catered to only 10 to 20 percent of the population to a system that is going to encompass all people. If that journey was an alphabetical journey and we were seeking to go from A to Z, I would judge that we are about M at this minute. In other words, we're halfway through to that journey. Some people may say right now that it's unfair. It's a little gloomy. I can already hear the predictable voices who will want to argue that massive progress has already been accomplished and nothing much more can be done. But I want you to consider briefly, my friends, where our education system is today. Our primary floor standard still permits schools to pass one in 10, pardon me, four in 10 students fail the basic standards of English and math after years of schooling. Around 40% of our young people fail to secure five high school passes, grades C and above, including math and English, a standard by which many parents and employers would already consider a very low standard. Shamefully, that same failure rate rises to over 60% when we look at children from poorer families. Sadly, it is unsurprising that a large number of these young people go straight from the educational system into the criminal justice system. This was unfortunately identified by Yolanda, Dr. Yolanda Ford in her 2009 report entitled Disposing Factors of Criminality in the Cayman Islands. The PPM government engaged this report and fully endorsed it. We as a nation must set big and bold ambitions that we can achieve. And the progressives want to express here and now your vote of confidence to our soon to be education officers and teachers and our value that, that are highly valued by us, that they may not feel restricted and constrained by either apparent pessimism of those who may pretend to speak for parents or teachers nor by the understandable temptation to set goals and targets at levels which are limited by our capacity to intervene in schools. Intervention can always target the lowest performers. Intervention capacity must not get in the way of us setting big ambitions and being impatient about what people refer to as the urgencies of now. So when I think of an educational system of the future, what I think of is this. 85 to 90 percent of young people leaving school equipped for real excellence in secondary education. Yeah. 85 percent, 85 to 90 percent of young people achieving new, more rigorous qualifications at key stages four and five. A massive closing of that gap of performance between the advantage and the disadvantage of our neighborhoods. And schools in every part of our islands 
in every community in the country where children's expectations are not constrained or capped by their parents' skills or their incomes or by expectations that when they reach 17 or 16, 16 or 17, they will dwaddle down the road to the largest employer. In every school in Cayman, I want a child to dream of being whatever they want to be. Doctors, engineers, head teachers, hotel managers, and even attorneys. But yes, I want them to also aspire to the lofty goals of being premier of these beautiful Cayman Islands. Our definition of success is that children getting the qualifications and grades will allow them good choices of jobs and give them resilience in the labor market as it evolves around their whole entire work life. It is, of course, about time that young people become well-educated citizens who can play a vital role in the society. But most importantly, the most of their lives with which they go beyond the aspiration of the workplace. Music, drama, education for its own sake are crucial components to this educational system. The vision requires a sea change in expectations for many people. We know most parents are on our side with this. There is no doubt that parents want the children to do well. There are some who claim the children from poor backgrounds cannot succeed. Some people mutter about genetics. Other talks about poverty crushing as the school's jobs are made impossible. We know that such views are wrong. We know that they're wrong because the best schools in our country have proven them to be wrong. These are schools in the Cayman Islands that are succeeding with our children. In our plan, such schools will no longer be isolated expectations, exceptions. We must, for our future, become the reality. This will, this will be the vision for most pupils, our teachers, and society. Firstly, an education system that delivers more highly qualified people is a good for the people who end up better educated. I now realize, of course, that there are people out there that say more qualification means people end up overqualified for jobs that are available. What a joke. This is the same lame argument that was used in the 19th century to oppose compulsory schooling and universal li literacy. It's the same argument that was used to oppose the rise in any school leaving age and the rise in school standards. It is an argument that has been shown to be wrong time and time again in the Cayman Islands and in every country. It is emphatically not the case that there are fixed numbers of skilled jobs and fixed numbers of unskilled jobs. On the contrary, the lesson from 40 years is that creating more skilled workforce leads to the creation of skilled work. With more polished graduates, firms create more graduate, posi graduate level positions. The ability of the economy to use people with high levels of generic skills is very great. Of course, there is always some unskilled work available, but even today, the Cayman Islands has too many people with too few skills relative for the demand of such labor. This is why so many people of the islands are unemployed and the remainder are largely in low wage employment. Qualifications bring economic security when times are tough. Several studies worldwide have shown that those with good qualifications are less likely to lose their job during a recession. Even those that lose their job are more likely to find more work more quickly than an unskilled person, even if they're lagging immigration system under the current administration that appears to have let down the countless Caymanians that unemployment is now registering at well over 10%. We cannot allow, we cannot know how the economy will evolve between now and when the current generation of school children retire. But we can be sure that many changes are ahead we need to help people to be successful in whatever life throws at them. A good education achieves just that. We hold fast, ladies and gentlemen, that education is the greatest equalizer. And we should be aware that other countries are not standing still. Education standards are rising throughout the world, in particularly what we used to refer to as developing countries. So if the Cayman Islands wants its economy to continue 
to be globally competitive, it must not lose the race for educational success. The effects of good education on society mirrors those for the individual. A society in which people have good jobs and do not remain unemployed for long periods of time during a recession would be a great society to live in. The cost of us all is that we will pay less benefits to those to a bad education. Tax revenues will be higher and more sustainable, allowing us to lower tax rates and, better, and offer better public services. And it would be a marvelous world in which to be a teacher. For sure, you would be expected to deliver and be held to account. But you would be part of a system that did deliver and by all purposes seen to deliver. Everyone would know that our schools were some of the best in the world and would expect our teachers to be as that part of that. We want a system where someone says at a party, I'm a teacher, and the person they're speaking with looks at that person as clever, effective, a part, and a, an effective part of a world-class system delivering to these Cayman Islands. That. Well, I'm, looking at your time. I'm proud of you people to tell you the truth. That's a progressive, die hard, not liberal reign is going to run you away. Absolutely. My good ladies and gentlemen, I've told you what we're ready to start delivery on and giving you a sense of the challenges that we're working at presently. And we look forward to your mandate by electing a progressive-led government on the 22nd of May that our well-balanced and thought-out proposals for our next generation can be accomplished. And for those of you that are school leaders and teachers, we genuinely hope that we can work in partnership to design better policies and realize the ambitious visions that we have for our schools, our country, and our kids. I want to thank you all, even in the rain and moving up and down, for your keen attention. My name is Woody DaCosta, candidate number six on your West Bay ballot. And I'm expecting that you give me good consideration on the 22nd of May so that I can help deliver this system and all of these policies contained in this wonderful manifesto tonight. I want to once again thank each one of you for coming out and weathering this beautiful rain. And I want you to continue staying and hear all of the wonderful things that we have to offer. Thank you and God bless these wonderful Cayman Islands.